Hey there, Sam. When you console an object instance, have you ever seen a property called proto attached to the object instance? Confused? I'll show you what I mean. Let's say I have a constructed function called fruit that accepts an argument color, which I'll then use it to set to the color property of the object instance. Then I'll create a new object, banana, out of this constructed function. And let's console out banana. So in the browser, as expected, we see our fruit object in the console. However, there's an extra property called proto in our object. What the hell is that? Let's expand it, and we see more crazy stuff. But hold on, this constructor property looks interesting. Does that look familiar to you? It looks like our fruits constructor function here. Why don't we try it out? I'll create a new variable, apple, and set it to new banana proto constructor, and pass in our apple argument in it, and console our apple, and it works. We're getting another instance of our fruits constructor function. So what the hell is going on here? Let's go through it step by step. The proto property is a special object called prototype in JavaScript. JavaScript will automatically attach this proto property to every single object that we create in JavaScript. And everything in JavaScript is an object. By everything, I mean everything, except two things, now and undefined. So if I have a string here, since everything in JavaScript is an object, by theory, I should be able to grab the proto property of our string here. Let's console it out. And there is something in there, and it is referring to the string's prototype object. Let's go through the rules of prototype in JavaScript. Rule number one, every constructor function or class has one and only one prototype object. So that means the prototype object is shared across all of the class or constructor's instances. Rule number two, every object instance has a proto property, as we've seen just now in our fruits instances. The proto property is a reference or link to the prototype object of their constructor function. Rule number three, the prototype object has a property called constructor, which is referred to the constructor function itself, just like what we have seen just now when we created the apple object on line 17. Still confused? Let's put this on a diagram so we can visualize this. So here's our fruit constructor. And this is its one and only prototype. And we have instances on the left hand side. So just now in our code, we created the banana object using the fruits constructor function. And the banana's proto property is referring to our prototype here. And the prototype object has a constructor property that is pointing back to the constructor function itself. And we can use that constructor property to create new instances of fruits. One constructor function can only have one prototype. So if we have more instances of fruits, the proto property will point towards the same prototype object. Now spend a few moments and try to understand this diagram. If you can digest this, you will now understand the basic on how prototype works in JavaScript. So going back to our code, since the proto property is just a reference to the prototype object, so in theory, if we compare the two using the equal operator, we should get true. And we do get true, which means great, and I'm not lying to you. Now, object instances can access to all the functions that we put in inside the prototype object. So if we add an eat function to the prototype object, we can now call the eat function on all instances of fruit. Because again, based on rule number one, the prototype object is shared across all of the instances. So now it brings us to another question. What's the difference between creating a function within a constructor function, again, storing the function inside the prototype object? If the question doesn't make sense, let's take a look at this example. Now, suppose I have a constructor function called car, and I'll create a new instance method called drive using the this keyword. In other words, I'm creating this function inside the car constructor function. And now in a second case, I'll create another constructor function called car2, and this time I'll put a drive function inside a prototype. So what are the differences between these two? Which one is better? The answer is the car2 way is better and more efficient. Why? Because in the first way, every time we create a new car object, JavaScript has to create a new function from scratch and assign it to the drive instance property. So there will be one new function for each car instance. So if we got 1000 cars, that means JavaScript has to create 1000 drive functions for all these instances. In the second case, however, since we're storing the drive function inside a prototype and the prototype is shared across all the instances, JavaScript no longer has to create the drive function from scratch for each new instance of car. So there's only one drive function. So that's why storing function inside a prototype object is better and more efficient.
Before we move on, let's take a look at another example. We can create an array using a square bracket or using the array constructor function. We simply need to type in new array, just like how we create our fruits object. Now, based on what we have learned so far, would the proto property of our array instance equals to the prototype object? Pause the video and think about it for a second. The answer is yes. Next question. Would the constructor property inside the prototype equals to the array constructor function itself? The answer is yes again. The last question. Would the constructor property inside the proto property equals to the array constructor function itself? The answer is yes, of course, because the proto property is referring to the prototype itself. If you got any of this wrong, be sure to rewatch this section and make sure you understand the basic of prototype because we're going to dive even deeper next. Now, I want to quickly show you something before we move on. Let's take a look on what is inside the array prototype. There are a lot of things in there. Do you find them familiar? These are the array functions that we have been using so far. So JavaScript stores all these functions inside the array prototype instead of loading them in every single array instance. And just like what we have discussed before, this is a good thing to do because we're not wasting memory. All right, let's move on. I want to introduce you something called the prototype chain in JavaScript. Everything in JavaScript is an object. So it's okay to say that everything in JavaScript inherits from the object constructor. And we know that every object has a proto property that refers to its prototype. And that brings us to a question. What is the prototype of a prototype? Let's see what will happen if I print out the proto property of the array's prototype. It seems like we're getting the prototype of the object constructor function. Let's test our theory. And we get true. What is going on here? So going back to the point that we made before, everything in JavaScript inherits from the object constructor. JavaScript actually builds its inheritance system based on the prototype. So when we try to access the proto property of the array's prototype, we're essentially accessing the prototype of array's parent, which is object. Let's go back to our diagram and go through this in more details. So we have the object constructor here as the parent of our fruit constructor function, and this is its prototype. So if we try to access the proto property on any of the fruits instance, it will point us to its parent's prototype, which in this case is the object's prototype. So let's put everything together. The object is the root ancestor of every data type in JavaScript. The other types of object, like array or our custom constructor function fruits here, simply inherits from the object. The inheritance system is based on prototype. So behind the scene, when we inherit something, JavaScript will simply build the new constructor function on top of the prototype of the parent object. So it kind of forms a chain of prototype. And we call this chain the prototype chain. And we can look up this chain by keep calling the proto property on any object instance, with each proto referring to its parent prototype. We're able to call the proto property until we reach the end of the chain, which is the object prototype. Now, this brings us another question. What would happen if we print out the proto property of the object's prototype? We get now. Why? Because as we discussed, object is the root ancestor of everything, and there's nothing else above it. So its prototype will be now. Okay, let's take a look at a few more examples to make this concrete. I'll create a variable name and store a string in it. Our name variable here is now an instance of string. What do you think is the proto property of name? If we console log it, we see the string's prototype. And again, name is an instance of string. So the proto property would point at the string's constructor's prototype. What about the proto property of the string's prototype? We see the prototype of the object's constructor because object is the parent of string. So we're simply getting a prototype of the parent here. And if we print out the proto property again on the object's prototype, we will see now, just like what we discussed before. Let's look at one more example before we move on. Let's create a num variable and set it to one. What is the proto property of num? We'll console log it. And it is the prototype of the numbers constructor function. Next question. What is the proto property of the numbers prototype? Console log it. And we see the object's prototype as expected. Now let's move on. 
so we know that everything in the prototype object is accessible by all instances. Here's how it works behind the scene. When we try to call a function inside an object, JavaScript will first try to look for the function inside the object instance. If the function is not found, then JavaScript will try to look inside the prototype object of the constructor function. If it is still not found, then it will look inside the parent's prototype and keep going until we reach the root ancestor, which is the object constructor's prototype. So knowing that if we add a function to the object's prototype, that means this function will become available to all object instances in JavaScript. For example, if I add a function called hey to our object prototype, and I create a new instance of array, and try to call the hey function on fruits, guess what will happen? It works. Why? Because of the rules that we described just now. So when we call the hey function, JavaScript is going to look inside the fruits instance, which there's no function called hey. Next, it's going to move on to the array prototype, and there's still no such function called hey. So JavaScript will then move on to the next parent, which is the object instance, and find the hey function inside the prototype, which is the function that we just defined. So we see hey in our console. So the concept to take away from here is that every object instance has access to everything inside their ancestors' prototype objects. Now for the last part of this lesson, let's talk more about inheritance. Let's create a person class. If I console log out the prototype of person, we see it's a prototype as expected. And the proto property of the prototype is again pointing at the object prototype. Nothing special here, just like what we have seen so far. Now what about if I create a child class for the person class? Let's create a class called student and it extend from the person class. If we console log out the prototype of student, we still see the prototype of student, but now with a name person attached to it because it is extending from the person class. So far, so good. But what about the product property of the student's prototype? We see the person's prototype. Why? Because person is the parent of student and the product property is pointing at a parent's prototype. So we see the person's prototype object. And if we go one more level up, we'll see the object's prototype again. And that's how JavaScript builds its inheritance system. Every time we create a child class, we're simply extending the prototype chain. The way JavaScript does things is very different than the other languages. The concept of the prototype object is very unique and different than the other programming languages. Again, the concept of prototype is an advanced topic in JavaScript. If you can understand this, you're now in a good position. All right, key takeaway for this lesson, Prototype is a special object that is attached to every constructor function. A constructor function can only have one prototype, and it is shared across all its instances. So all the instances have access to the properties and functions inside the prototype object. The object constructor is the root ancestor of every data type in JavaScript. JavaScript's inheritance systems is based on the prototype chain. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.